Hello everybody and welcome back to another trade video on the channel. As you can tell from the title, it was a massive day of trading in the AFL, particularly for my club, the Sydney Swans. We got two big name recruits, Brody Grundy and Taylor Adams. There was much speculation, particularly on Grundy throughout the year. Uh, the Taylor Adams rumours started swirling up. At first, a lot of people thought they were probably just uh, false rumours made up by the media, but it turns out there was some legitimacy to those claims because he is now a Sydney Swans player, and I am thrilled about that. Now, of course, there was one other deal involving Sydney today, and that was Dylan Stevens going to North Melbourne. But I don't think that's too big of a loss, especially since we brought in James Jordan, who is pretty much a like-for-like -like player in terms of the role he plays and the skill level he plays at. In terms of what we had to give up in all of these trades, or receive in the case of the final one, let's just quickly go through that now. As you can see here, the first deal that was completed was the Dylan Stevens move. North Melbourne got Stevens and pick 25, while Sydney got pick 44 and next year's end of first round pick. Now that first rounder, that future first rounder that North Melbourne traded away was the first of their two end of round priority picks for 2024. So I believe that that would be pick 18 at this stage, although I'm not entirely sure. Second up was definitely the most talked about deal throughout the season of the three, and that was Brody Grundy finally making his way from Melbourne to Sydney. Third club in three years for Brody Grundy, obviously played for Collingwood for the first part of his career up until 2021 then, well, everyone knows the story of what happened there. Collingwood had major salary cap issues. They couldn't afford to keep paying his big long-term contract, which was roughly $900,000 a year. So they moved him on to Melbourne, still paid a small portion of his salary, but Melbourne obviously being the ones that Grundy was playing for, uh, paid most of the contract. But now, um, he is going to be moving to Sydney. Obviously, Grundy and Gorn in tandem didn't work. So Grundy, after being dropped, uh, made the request to move to Sydney. Now, interestingly, I did a bit of research. And per Tom Morris, so take that with a grain of salt, um, Collingwood are still going to be paying a, a small portion of Brody Grundy's salary. So obviously they didn't have any clauses which uh, predicted this situation where Grundy would be moving away from Melbourne. Um, in terms of what Collingwood are paying, I got from these two articles, which I couldn't actually read because they're both behind a paywall. Fucking stupid. But anyway, it says that uh, Collingwood will be paying $250,000 of his salary while Sydney will be paying the remaining $650,000 of his salary. Pretty good deal for Sydney, if you ask me. In the trade itself, Sydney gave up pick 46 and a future second round pick to get Grundy. Apparently, they originally only offered up pick 46, which was rejected and labelled as offensive by Sam McClure, but I think it's more offensive that he's allowed to be on radio personally. So overall, I think we did very well to get Grundy for quite cheap in terms of draft picks. He's a two-time All-Australian Ruckman. He was a Collingwood best and fairest player. So to get him for only pick 46 and a future second round pick is a very good job done by the list management team. And yeah, I can't wait to see Grundy play for Sydney next year. The final deal of the day involving Sydney was Taylor Adams moving from Collingwood to Sydney. And in return, Collingwood getting pick 33. I've already given my thoughts on Taylor Adams potentially moving. Now he has moved. Um, so if you want a more detailed explanation on my thoughts then go watch the video I made on it 
but I'm just going to summarise it and say I think this is good for us. I, yes, I, I think this will definitely benefit our team. Um, we got him for cheaper than I expected. I floated around picks 23 and 31, I believe, being used. So pick 33 is cheaper than what I expected, and I am very happy with this trade. So there is my thoughts on the three separate deals being done. Obviously, there were other deals completed involving other clubs, but in this video, I just wanted to focus on the ones involving Sydney because I support them. Uh, yeah, overall, I think we did a very good job in all three of the trades. I think that even in the one where we lost a player, I think we got pretty good draft capital in return a future first round pick did have to give up pick 25 but you know what? it's fine so yeah overall i think that trade was a success we got some yeah pretty good stuff in return and yeah grundy and adams both getting them on the cheap will definitely make our team much better next year uh, we are crying out for a good Ruckman, especially now that Tom Hickey has retired. So yeah, Grundy is going to be our number one Ruckman, and hopefully he can return back to his uh, previous form in the years of 2018 and 2019 when he was All-Australian. That would be very nice. And Taylor Adams, well yeah, he's a very good player as well. Good experience for the younger players to continue to develop around and he is a very handy player himself so with that uh, that pretty much wraps up everything i wanted to say i uh, hope you did enjoy this video if you did please leave a like and subscribe comment down your thoughts on these trades in the comment sections below and i'll see you all in the next one bye